To the surprise of absolutely no one, the live-action remake of Peter Pan and Wendy is a sack of doggy dookie. Following standard protocol for modern Disney films, it's a visually hideous, narratively boring, and audibly dull cash grab that changes and disregards the original story's themes and concepts just so crap can be added to Disney's streaming service. While the original story is full of subtext and themes of the difficulty of letting go of childhood and growing up, this time we're presented with a modern update, meaning every character is insufferable, unlikable, and leaving you with absolutely no one to root for. It's a soulless, gutless mess that only serves to push a narrative you're all used to by now. My feminism, my diversity, equals quality. Any criticism of that? My racism, my misogyny. To one-up the diversity in this film and to continue displacing the original, I heard the sequel's going all in on modern meta and is gonna have Macho Man CGI'd in to play an ISIS member. <laughs> yeah, and the streets will flow, yeah, uh -huh. Talking about with blood of the infidel, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, been to the top, yeah, met a lot, yeah, been back down, uh -huh. It's hilariously obvious Disney knew their hands were covered in shit with this movie because they vomited it onto Disney+, Plus, with barely any fanfare besides a couple trailers that got absolutely fucking ratioed into oblivion. You know it's a problem when you turn on the app and it's the fourth thing they advertise to you in the top scroll behind a documentary about Ed Sheeran, who's in a much publicized copyright lawsuit as of this video's publication, and Jeremy Renner's renovations. My experience with the Peter Pan IP growing up was the original animated Disney film, and more than anything, Steven Spielberg's Hook. But watching this remake with just that limited knowledge is enough to identify a multitude of ill-conceived changes that fundamentally break the intent and goals of the original characters. Not one single character in this modern pile of shit makes it out unscathed. I'm going to tear this movie apart starting with the plot, but first a quick word about the sponsor of this video. Have you ever Googled yourself and were shocked to find your personal information on one of those public listing sites? Yeah, me too. Googling my name, I can find my previous addresses, workplaces. It's creepy and feels incredibly intrusive. Data brokers are making a fortune selling our information to robocallers, spammers, and others who want to learn more about us, like where we live. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura can identify data brokers exposing your info and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your info if you ask them to, but they make it super hard to do, and Aura will handle it for you. You can try Aura free for two weeks using my link, and Aura does so much more to protect you from online threats you can't see. It's really easy to set up so you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and more. You get everything at one affordable price. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online so you can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. You can let people continue to exploit and profit off your private info, or you can go to my link right here to start your two-week free trial, also linked in the description. Now, the plot of this idiocy. The movie starts with Wendy sword fighting with her siblings, her shattering a mirror, and then blaming it on them because she's a fucking asshole. Why did you say it was our fault? You're a pirate, aren't you? It's every man for himself. Peter Pan shows up completely drained of any and all charisma whatsoever as he sweeps them off to Neverland amidst some of the worst CGI this side of the last Disney release. We arrive in Neverland to meet Captain Hook, who sees Peter in the sky and tries to slaughter them by shooting them down. As the cannons are careening towards them, Wendy and the crew wisely put their hands up to shield themselves instead of getting the fuck out of the way. Scattered, Wendy washes ashore and finds the Lost Boys, who aren't all boys, and the dialogue tells us to fuck right off if we care about that. But you're not all boys. So? But I guess it doesn't really matter. Hook has captured Wendy's brothers and brings them to Skull Island to murder the shit out of them. And much like his counterpart Peter, he's also deprived of all charisma. Turns out the psychopath that is Peter chopped off Hook's hand and fed it to a crocodile. Peter shows up to fight Hook with some terrible choreography and the CGI crocodile inadvertently helps Peter and the group escape as Hook runs for his life with a oh my, this is definitely supposed to be funny according to the music moment. Wendy and her brothers are brought to the Lost Boys hideout where they talk about how no one remembers their parents and perhaps Wendy could be their mother. But she reminds us it's the 21st century and motherhood is for weak trad wives only. Wendy and Tinkerbell become friends, bonding over what an asshole Peter is because he doesn't listen. Wendy then talks to Peter who explains that Hook used to be a lost boy and his best friend, who sailed away one day and came back all grown up. Hook suddenly shows up and talks about how he has many memories of playing hide and seek in these ruins with Peter as a lost boy. Now you might ask, if Hook knows this area so well, why the fuck didn't he come here over the last several decades and waited until just now when the plot deemed it necessary? 
Because fuck you, that's why. Then he murders Peter, captures Wendy and Tinkerbell, and brings them back to his ship. Hook then tells Wendy the truth, that he didn't leave Neverland willingly. Peter actually banished him from Neverland because Hook dared miss his mother. Yeah, that's right. Peter Pan is the fucking villain of this movie. As it turns out, the pirates who are so evil are actually pretty great because they saw a boy lost at sea and saved his damn life. In fact, they were so willing to accept an outsider that he went on to become their captain. Elsewhere, Tiger Lily, the lost boy leader, brings Peter back to life. Then the moment that's supposed to be a feel-good one happens when Peter and Tiger Lily show up. It's awkward because why am I cheering for this psychopathic child showing up? Why am I cheering for the fucking villain? It's just shitty person versus shitty person. Peter is saved by Wendy multiple times during the final battle because, obviously, Peter then apologizes to Hook for being a bad friend, and they couldn't have possibly gotten to this theme in a worse way because Peter's such an insane character in this movie, I can't feel a single thing for him. In the end, Wendy and the boys go home, and Peter saves Hook from the water, even though he's drowned all of Hook's pirate friends who rescued him all those years ago, so we'll just ignore that. And Wendy's brought all the Lost Boys home with her, so they can go from being free in Neverland to growing up in a group home and having a formal broken childhood. What a winning version of this story! As far as characters, let's start with Wendy, whose modern interpretation is an abomination. There's a lot of nuance to the original character. A representation for motherhood, a compassionate, nurturing, and kind person who provides a sense of stability to those around her. Wendy is also supposed to represent the struggle between childhood and adulthood, drawn to Peter's adventurous lifestyle but ultimately choosing to go back home and grow up. This is completely turned on its head for this idiotic modern interpretation, calling into question why they even bother to remake these things to begin with since they fundamentally change everything they stood for. This modern Wendy is an insufferable turd from the get-go, which can be hand-waved away as the childishness in her, but it really just fuels the standard modern trope of fierce independence and narcissism. The film plays around with the theme of her being a caretaker type to the Lost Boys, but it's only in a fleeting moment and even during that, she explicitly states that she doesn't believe she wants to have kids in the future. Very subtle messaging. To further along the girl boss narrative, as mentioned, she saves Peter countless times throughout the movie and it's clear as day this is her film. You have the boy's magic. No, this magic belongs to no boy. Oh my god, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> the character was originally supposed to be charmed by Peter Pan's exploits and drawn to his carefree nature, but as soon as Wendy arrives in Neverland, she's immediately turned away from his lifestyle and criticizes him from the onset, eliminating any character arc for her whatsoever. Subtext, what the fuck is that? Nah, this shit is right on the nose, right where modern writing belongs. There's a writer strike going on in Hollywood as this video is being released, and I'm trying to think of how we're supposed to give a shit about it when they're providing us shit like this. I figured I'd mention Peter Pan's second since he's second fiddle, or even third here. They've turned Peter into the fucking villain of the movie. This dude is now absolutely crazy and there's no other way to see it. There have been different interpretations of Peter Pan, but in essence, he's a whimsical character who never wants to grow up and can be selfish and thoughtless because of his immaturity and desire to remain a kid forever. This movie amplifies that a hundredfold to the point he's become an absolute monster. The original Peter Pan dueled with and messed around with Captain Hook, who inadvertently lost his hand to a crocodile during one of those battles. In this, Peter is insane. Their backstory has been interconnected to make Hook come off as more sympathetic, where James Hook was the first lost boy and Peter's best friend. Hook dared to say out loud that he missed his mother, and the psycho-dominant Peter banished James from Neverland, forcing him to grow up. When he returned, Peter cut off his fucking hand and fed it to a crocodile, on purpose. Remember the gator that got your hand? I got his head. Because of his backstory being mixed with Peter's, the original interpretation of Hook is completely flipped, changed, folded, and fucked. No longer is the character a commentary on unchecked authority, no no. Now he's a sympathetic villain. Another Disney villain deconstructed and stripped of what made him compelling with the idea that it'll make him more interesting. What it ends up doing is making him a bland, boring nothing burger, so basically embodying the feeling of the film itself. Tinkerbell's entire story is also flipped on its head, because updating a film for the current generation of kids means getting rid of anything the filmmakers see as problematic. Wendy and Tinkerbell originally had a tense relationship because they were struggling for Peter's affection, but we can't possibly have that kind of wrong think in our cinematic adventures starring females nowadays. That's politically incorrect. Instead, Tinkerbell is looked at essentially as a victim, controlled by her narcissistic gaslighter Peter. And the short bit of character development they give her is when she bonds with Wendy over how poorly Peter treats her. Yep, I'm fucking serious. That's what they do. The Lost Boys, who are not the Lost Boys. 
Because you're not all boys. So? But I guess it doesn't really matter. Our literal afterthoughts. They are window dressing, coded in diversity, a literal box check, and almost nothing more. No characters are developed. No characters are given real personalities. They exist because the story deems it so, but otherwise the filmmakers do absolutely fuck all with them, other than have them be conveniences and MacGuffins for the characters to do something with. Tiger Lily doesn't play a huge role in the movie other than, oh, I don't know, replacing Peter Pan as the leader of the Lost Boys. It's an overcorrection from the way the tribe was portrayed in the original, having her be the heart and soul of the Lost Boys in an attempt to somehow make up for whatever perceived wrongdoing Disney feels they did with the original animated film. She also constantly talks in a language no one on the screen understands so that you know she's fucking native, okay? Subtext has absolutely no place in Peter Pan and Wendy. And before you get on the, well, it's a kid's movie defense, mind you that the original story was rich in nuance and thematic undertones and overtones. This one is overtone light, delivering a message of friendship and redemption in the worst way possible, brought to you through unlikable characters, muted and horrendous color palettes, and worst of all, boring storytelling with no fun to be had whatsoever. I love to openly mock the diversity and inclusion factor that's present in modern cinema, not because I don't like diversity and inclusion, it's because of how it's implemented in modern cinema. Take for example this article from TV Insider, which shouts Paige Schill article, but essentially boils down to explaining why the movie is good because of the fact they made changes in diversity and modernized what they considered problematic themes. Apparently, motherhood is a problematic theme. Wendy is an obnoxiously independent character, only motherly in the sense that she is constantly telling other characters what to do and how to approach situations. She immediately takes charge upon her arrival in Neverland, which on one hand could be seen as maternal, and on the other, you remember what year it is and realize it's a girl boss moment. Remember that she doesn't want to have kids as she explicitly discusses in the movie. The filmmakers and shill articles pretend that this is the first time any iteration of Peter Pan has had a diverse and inclusive cast, too. So we'll just completely ignore Steven Spielberg's Hook, which came out over 30 years ago and had an incredibly diverse cast, particularly with the Lost Boys. You know what Hook did too? Made some of the Lost Boys' primary characters, gave them real personalities, and made them part of the viewers' fondest memories from that movie. For whatever reason, Steven Spielberg doesn't like Hook, but objectively, the cast was diverse and the script attempted to provide three-dimensional characters for the boys, without drawing any focus to the fact that the cast was diverse. Not until I was an adult and had this stupid shit talked about constantly in articles did I realize that Rufio, the dude who everyone loved and wanted to be like when I was a kid, wasn't white. This is what I like to call Jennifer Lawrence syndrome, when filmmakers and showrunners pretend that they're stunning and brave and act like they're the first person ever to have a black actor, an Asian actor, or whatever ethnicity or gender play a role even though it had already been done decades prior and ironically, written and implemented far better too. My good friend and fellow YouTuber Vex Electronica is Sri Lankan and Canadian, and she messaged me and said she was really excited to finally see herself on screen now that Peter Pan was played by a Sri Lankan. I'm just kidding. She's not a fucking idiot. And by the way, you should really check out her channel because she's tremendously talented and funny as fuck. The fact that Peter Pan has traditionally been played by a woman is also lost on the filmmakers, apparently. The Peter Pan IP has been diverse and inclusive for decades, yet countless articles have been written about its problematic and racist past, as if stride after stride hasn't already been made. As far as the cast goes, it's hard to judge because finding reasonable kid actors can be difficult, and they all do a serviceable job. The actress playing Wendy does what she can with the terrible writing and 180 degree character with zero arc. And if I were to provide a harsh critique on anyone, it would be with the actor playing Peter Pan, who comes off as flat, monotone, and downright boring to listen to or see perform. Jude Law is also getting hyped up as the one shining light of decency in this film, but I completely disagree. I love Jude Law, I think he's a great actor, but I don't think he does much with this version of Captain Hook, and it's not even necessarily his fault. He can't chew up the scenery like Dustin Hoffman was able to in Hook because his character is the modern, deconstructed, boring version of the captain. It's not until the end of the movie where there's a slight bit of humor that lands, and yes, that one bit of humor is solid and is because of his delivery, so sure. He's the one bright spot, I guess, for all of 20 seconds. It's when he's pushing Wendy to walk the plank and questions why there hasn't been a sound yet. The one moment of charm in the entire movie, saved almost until the end, And I definitely do not understand what the fuck is even going on in the decision-making department of visuals and cinematography. This movie, along with the Little Mermaid remake, looks so dark, so bland, so muted, 
So disgustingly awful, I cannot fathom someone making this creative choice and thinking it was the right one. This movie looks like shit. Complete shit. From the cinematography to the lighting to the wardrobe, this movie is a complete and utter failure. Peter Pan and Wendy was safely tucked away onto Disney+. Plus. Away from theaters in hopes Disney could have a movie silently crash and burn instead of very publicly with poor box office numbers. Call it like it is. Just another Disney disaster. GG's.